Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel. Can't find a battery. Good about. And over there is John Lewandowski. <sighs> um, before we get into this, I would like to congratulate Luke Shedd on playing a thousand games and a uh, Guinea Malkin on scoring 500 career NHL goals for the Pittsburgh Penguins. I saw that milestone was hit yesterday. Also, in other news, uh, congratulations to former Milwaukee Admiral Justin Kirkland on scoring his first NHL goal. Beyond that, let's get into this game. All right, the National Predators took on the Edmonton Oilers today. Shots on goal in the first period, Edmonton outshot Nashville 15 to 7. In the second period, Edmonton outshot Nashville 13 to 7. In the third period, Nashville outshot Edmonton 13 to 8. And in total, Edmonton outshot Nashville 36 to 27. Uh, Nashville was better in the faceoff circle at 54.5% to Edmonton's 45.5%. Um, Edmonton goes 0 for 4 on the power play while the Predators go 1 for 3. Um, the Predators had 13 penalty minutes to Edmonton's 11. Predators had 30 hits to Edmonton's 8. Edmonton had 18 block shots to the Predators' 15. The Predators had 21 giveaways to Edmonton's 18. And the Predators had 5 takeaways to Edmonton's 1. Scoring in the first period at the 11.46 mark for Nashville was Philip Forsberg scoring his second of the year, assisted by Yossi, his second, and O'Reilly, his second. That was a nice deflection tip in. Yes. Um, then at the 17.39 mark for Edmonton, Brett Kulak scores his first of the year, assisted by Jan Mark, his second. That was it for the first period. Then the second period at the 10.50 mark for Edmonton was Jeff Skinner scoring his second of the year, assisted by Nurse, his second. Then scoring also at the second was Jonathan Marcheseau scoring his first on the power play with an assist from Roman Yossi, his third, and UC Soros, his first. Um, That was a nice tip as well especially since it was out of midair yeah um then mcdavid does what mcdavid does best and that's like the lamp uh mcdavid gets his first of the season with an assist from matthias Ekholm and leon dreisaitl so the preds held them to one setup which is fine um, then in the third, uh, Kulak gets the empty netter at the 1924 mark. By the way, McDavid's goal was at the 1829 mark of the third or of the second. No other score in, in that game. Preds fall to 0 and 4 for the first time in franchise history. Um, beyond that, um, uh, Smith minus three, uh, Sissons minus three. Um, everybody else was either a minus one or, or like I don't see a single, no pluses. Everyone was a minus one or a zero. Uh, Saros made 12, 32 saves on 35 shots with a 91.4 save percentage, allowing three goals on even strength. Used to Saros signing his new contract. His 0 oh, 3 with a 3.83 goals against average and an 87.8 save percentage. Um, this is just not good. Uh, Saros in his last three games have give, has given uh, 11 goals. Um, the Preds are back in action on Saturday at 1 o'clock uh, versus Detroit. Um, that day, uh, oh, it's six o'clock. So why did it say one? Oh, it is one. Okay. It's one o'clock. 
Puck drop. Um, that day you will not see the Preds re -ga uh, post game until after the Admirals and Atlanta game. Um, as uh, I will be attending the Admirals game as it is our home opener. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with the Admirals versus the Rockford Ice Hogs. Uh, the Rockford Ice Hogs carry a very big, big roster. Um, the uh, Ice Hogs have uh, one of the top defensive um, prospects in Kevin Korczynski, and as well as having former Admiral Zach Sandberg. Um, beyond that, um, they also have Brett Seedy returning, uh, Jackson Cates returning, um, uh, Kevin Fitzgerald coming over from the Wolves, uh, Ethan Del Mastro returning, um, and in net they have uh, Camesso and Mitchell Weeks. Um, with that being said, um, uh, very physical, heads up roster, very big roster. Uh, their smallest guy is CD at 5'9, 167. Um, Frank Nazar is, is at 5'9, 175. Uh, he is a rookie as well. Uh, the biggest player on that team is Louis Crevier at 6'8, 228. Um, I believe that the correct uh, their goalie uh Camesso, who is their starter, is uh on the season has one game played with a one point zero one goals against average. Um with that being said, he also represented the team USA at the Olympics in twenty twenty two in Beijing, China, where he appeared in two games at 8-0 win over China and a 3-2 win over Germany. He has a goals against average of 1-0-0 with a 96.4 save percentage in Olympic play. In 2020-2021, he also represented Team USA at the IIHF World Championships where they won a bronze medal in college. He won he helped Boston win the Hockey East Championship and reached the Frozen Four with Boston and fell to the top seed of Minnesota in 2021, also named Hockey East All-Rookie in 2020 2021. Um, beyond that, Meso is 6'2 and catches right hand. Um, With that being said, um, uh, around the division, the Wolves got loaned Brendan Lemieux today from the Carolina Hurricanes, as well as uh, Gage Alexander getting called up from Grand Rapids from Toledo. Um, Rockford sends Isaac Phillips to the Wolves. He gets called up. Um, the Wolf, or sorry, the Wolf, the Blackhawks. Who? That was Rockford. Ah, I saw Chicago and thought Wolves. <laughs> um, Carolina loans also to the Wolves, Yoakam Ryan. So they have a lot of NHL on that roster. Uh, Greg Rapids also loses Justin Hall. I believe he was sent down just done to get his footing down. It seemed like he had a slow start in training camp. Um, beyond that, in that is all in the AHL. Uh, so far at this time, the bottom two in the division are the Nashville Predators and Colorado Avalanche. I don't think I'd have said that if you, when we started the season that that would be the case. But they are both last, high, or dead last in the league. Um, Nashville's being outscored 8-18 to in their last four games while well, Colorado is being outscored 13 to 25 in their last four games. So they're at least getting the puck in the net. Um 
The Sharks are winless as well. They're 0-2-2, two two, but they have two overtime losses, I believe. Yep, two overtime losses. Not sure if any of them went to a shootout, but they both have well, they have two points. So that says, oh, yep, they have one shootout loss. Um, that says a lot more than what you need to know. The Edmonton Oilers are now 2-3. and three. Well, everyone seems to be struggling the Congratulations to the Calgary Flames, who are 4-0, and oh, as well as the New York Rangers, who are 3-0-1, oh, and, and the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are 3-0. and oh. um, At the current moment, the games that are live, Tampa Bay will be... Um, okay. uh, the only game left live is Seattle and Philadelphia. They are tied at 2 Let's see if I can get an update on the standings here. Yeah, so that's correct. That's correct. Um, with that being said, the Nashville Predators really got to figure something out fairly quickly. You do not want to get yourself into a position that you have to dig yourself out of. There was a lot of high hopes coming into this season with the additions of Sam Coast and Marcia so, uh, as well as Shea. Um, I'm not exactly sure how all of this will work out in the end. The Nashville Predators are, they have 725,000 in cap space. Um, the only player with a no movement clause, oh, no movement clause, started July first, twenty twenty eight. Must submit. Oh, no movement clause started July first, twenty twenty eight. Submits fifteen team no trade clause. Alrighty, Yossi has a no movement clause. Saros is kicks next year. Um, my current consideration. Um, is at the current moment, uh, the Preds are still eating cap for Ekholm and Yossi. They have dead cap there. Four million will open up next season. Uh, Duchesne will cost them an extra million. They're still paying tourists. But after that, it gets really nice for the Preds because in 2026-27, they will only be paying $3.5 million in cap, where next season they're paying $8.8 .8 Five. But with that being said, it only goes up by a million. So they gained about three million in open cap left back. Uh, but they already lose 2.74 of that against for the Preds. With Nyquist being up on his contract, as well as Tomasino Evangelista and Parsonen. Um, I'd imagine that Evangelista will get a, a new contract, but Parson and, and Tomasino will not. Um, Parson and Tomasino are not uh, waiver or waiver exempt um, at the current moment. Um, okay, so they're sliding back. Got it. Um, at the current moment, uh, they're sliding Kaylee and Lind and David Edstrom's contract. I wouldn't be surprised to see Edstrom come over by the end of the season for the Preds. Um, they're also sliding Tanner Mullendike's contract at 19. They're giving him one more year of juniors. He will be probably joining us as well, as well as, uh, um, Andrew Gibson, um, Nashville's minor league goalies are Magnus Perota. Um, they do have quite a bit of reserves. They have 25 players in reserves um, coming up. Uh, those are definite. Okay. Uh, Isaac Walter, Luke Reed. Chase McClay, Gutter, uh, uh, Gutter will fought, uh, 
Gunner Will Fontaine, Matthew Wood, Ben Striden. Oh, nope, those are next year. Um, so Wolf Wood would need to be signed by next year. Wouldn't surprise me if he signed next season. Uh, coming into uh, pro hockey at 20, right. as well as Aiden Fink. Uh, there are some next year I wouldn't be surprised to see them sign. Um, uh, Nashville may sign Yuha at Cola next season, um, with Maluda still having a year of junior eligibility. Felix Nielsen. Uh, he is 19. They don't have to sign him until 2027 because he was 17 when they drafted them. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him get grabbed as well. Uh, uh, Victor Noringer, he is starting to play in the SHL as of last week. He got called up from the J20 team. So um, there's that going on as well for the Preds. Um, in the intermittent part of it, like, you know, guys who are inside. Um, upcoming, they have one, three firsts, two seconds, a, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Um, if I'm Nashville, I, 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 I understand where this could be a potential problem, but I don't see where God, maybe moving a guy like Sissons can be bad. Yeah. Uh, Sissons is eating up 2.85 of cap. Um, he's got another year under contract, so maybe you can get a defense, a solid defenseman. I'm not talking about like a big name defenseman, but if you can cut the cap by a million, take it. Even if it's not, if you can get an AHL forward and an AHL defenseman out of it, and you just turn it around and call up like a... Um, oh. I'd say a, a LaRue, um, a Kemmel, somebody to maybe try and spark this team. LaRue would probably be your best bet. Yeah. Because I'm just saying, like, at what point do you you got to do something to spark this team? And Sissons has been here a long time, and he's minus three the last two games. McCarron's not doing well. You need to spark this team and say, hey, if you don't do this, these young guys down there, they're coming for your jobs. Because those guys know how to win. And, and I'm not wrong there. Right. And if it gets too bad, I can see Brunette being on the hot seat. Lots yeah, being on the hot seat. Because, lo and behold, who knows if Trotz is going to be the long-term bet. Look, we all love Barry Trotz as a coach. GM, maybe not. Maybe he takes too much of a coaching approach into GM. It doesn't think of the salary cap. Do they send McCarron back to Milwaukee? Because, obviously, it's not working. McCarron's probably been the most physical thing I've seen out there. Yeah. But I'm not seeing anything positive coming out of that offensive possessions. It's just flat. There's no speed. It's just pass, 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 shoot from the point. Pass, 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 shoot from the point. Pass, pass, shoot from the point. Like, get to the net. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love a good goal, but you can't do this old school duck and dodge style hockey. It just doesn't work anymore. It's like dump and chase. It's the dumbest thing since its inception. It didn't work when I saw it when I was a kid. It doesn't work now. Like, maybe if you're Edmonton with all the speed they got, but, I mean, really, looking at it, the Preds, <sighs> Fabro's contract's up after the year. Shen's still got another year on his deal. Um, 
Nyquist is another guy I could see them moving with 3.185. If, if it doesn't work out, Nyquist will get you some good, solid return. But spark this damn team. They played solid defensively. I'll give them that. Right, they really did. From the forward position. But beyond that, beyond the power play and the penalty kill, they were getting killed five on five. Yeah. That's not where you want to be getting beat. Make them beat you on the power play. Make them beat you elsewhere. Don't let them beat you five on five. Make them beat you elsewhere. You go beat them five on five. I mean, you've got three of the best players this roster I've seen in a Preds jersey, and you're doing nothing. Stamkos, shoot the flipping puck. Like, Stamkos, I don't even think, has a goal yet for Nashville. <laughs> Three games, no points, minus two, four penalty minutes. Yeah. Wait, that's not including tonight. Two, two. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to get his stats including tonight. Uh, uh, Stamkos was a minus one tonight. Four games, minus three, no points. Minus one versus Edmonton, minus one versus Seattle, minus one versus Detroit. He has a whopping... Uh, four shots tonight, two shots yet, a last game, five shots versus Detroit, and three shots versus Dallas. His average shift, he's getting 20 shifts, 20 shifts, 22 shifts, 23 shifts, 23 minutes, 19 minutes, 17 minutes, 18 minutes. How about ice? So he's getting the time out there. It's just not, do, there's no production. I, your life of me don't understand it. It's almost like I, I don't get it. I'm, I'm just die. Team's going to make me go gray. But we're back at it again tomorrow with the, with the Admirals and the Preds return on Saturday. So, with that being said, thank you for watching from Milwaukee to Nashville. Brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 2002, West Harvard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at Polo 4 7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com.